All right, what is up, people? We are going to try to get the front end of this car back together today is the goal. I just went and picked up the control arms from Mike, and I come out here and grinded them all out. As you can see, he's got these tabs right here put on them. Uh, I went and spray painted everything, letting them dry out now. And then we also went over to Dustin's house. Shout out to Dustin. He's a local, uh, just small guy, just like all of us. Uh, races out of his uh, garage in his backyard, built a pretty awesome Fox body. Uh, and the guy is extremely, extremely freaking talented. He actually has two of his own, what are they called, lathes or mills or whatever, where he can basically make parts. Um, but he doesn't like do it for the public or anything like that. He has a normal full-time job, and then he just does them to make his own parts or people he knows. So he reached out to me and offered to make our solid bushings for our rack and I want to show you them because he did an amazing job. Turbo John's car is also going to get a set of these uh, since Dustin's local. He's working on them now and um, I think it turned out perfect. So on your steering rack, these are your traditional bushings that we just took out of here in the previous video if you remember. They have a metal insert inside of them and then basically the rubber. Uh, if you go back to our video where we did our alignment, you could see the issues with these, how much play they had in them and that's the reason why we need to go with something different. Now, some people recommended going with the poly bushing. Um, I'm not against going with the poly bushing, and that's what I was about to do. However, uh, when somebody reaches out local and says they'll fab up a set of solid bushings, that's what we did. Nobody seems to sell these right now. Uh, Chassis Engineer was selling them, it looked like, but nobody else was just selling the plain Jane solid bushings. So if you look these up, they have some solid bushings that are offset. However, none are listed that I could find for the Pinto rack. This is just a Pinto style rack, which I think is also a Mustang rack. But um, just a Pinto rack, none of them was listed for that. And I, I didn't find anything. So Dustin built these, they drop in like that. Well, I actually put them from the backside. I went to talk to Uncle Mike. This is the backside actually, I'm sorry. I went to talk to Uncle Mike after I picked these up. Test fitted them into Turbo John's Flaming River rack. Mine's just a knockoff cheap one. John's is a Flaming River rack on his new car and they fit right inside his. And after talking to Mike, um, I, he was like, run them this way. And then Dustin made them so that they stuck out just a little bit, which is perfect, which is absolutely freaking perfect. Because now I can clamp these in here, push these in here and take a flat wheel. And I'm going to flat wheel these perfectly flat with the rack so that they're the exact uh, fit to the rack. Now, we'll take a washer on this side, just like we had before, the same exact setup that we were running with these basically. And then we will squish them down with the washer and then everything will be sandwiched together and be nice and tight. Now there's a little bit of tolerance in these where they have, they have just a little bit of play in them. Whenever we sandwich these things in with the washer on the other side, it shouldn't have no play at all. Honestly, it should be nice and clamped in there and tight. Uh, Uncle Mike even recommended if you wanted to, you could even go and tack these up and weld these up around here and turn your piece into a solid piece, but I don't think there's no need for that at all. Yeah, what I might, what did you say, Harper? What are we are explaining to people about this steering rack. Cause look, we got these new parts. You wanna see how heavy that is? Is that light? Yeah. Is that nice? Yeah. But when I was measuring this, I noticed that this did not really measure out where it was a perfect circle at all. Um, so we didn't want to make these too tight where they had to be beat in there, stress out the aluminum cast on this and then you leave yourself the problem. So I wanted them just to drop in like that, perfect, and not really have too much play at all. Let's go, let's get these uh, cut down and then uh, let's fit up this rack and see where our bump steer is gonna be. All right, so Mike, come over, we're gonna set this up, but I went ahead and put these on. Now I used a spacer because now I actually have some shank of the bolt where the nut won't go all the way tight now that we've changed these to solid mounts. So this is way too long. I'm gonna go back and change it later. Um, but for right now, that bumps it up 100% tight. So what we're gonna do on the bump steer is, you know, you have these uh, spacers on here, but then it will only pivot so much before that little spacer hits. You can order heim joints that have the misalignment spacers on them, but then they, tr they change the bolt size. If you're using a 5.8, it changes it down to a half. And we can't use a half inch bolt on our steering spindle because Mike disagreed with me and there's too much force on it in the at least five eight. So what we've done is I ordered from Speedway Motors these tapered misalignment spacers and I'm hoping that these work and will get us exactly what we need. 
down in there um, with these things. Does that look a lot better? Yeah, better right there. Good. So hopefully when we separate this thing here in a second, we won't get our binding and we can get our bumps there right. All right, so back to the string alignment. I know somebody who wanted more detail on the last video when we were at Randy's shop. All Mike has is it is just hooked to the rear of the car right there. And it's just wrapped around the tires. Okay, and then up the side. And then it's, a, it's the reason you do this. The rear end square off of measurements. The back of the bubble and the front of the bubble, you get that line to just touch. Yeah. And then you pull your line. Once that touches, it doesn't matter how far in or how far out your front wheel is. You measure from the string over to your wheel. Yeah. To get your wheel square with the string to square with the rear wheel. To so where the rear wheel. But it, it doesn't 100% matter if the front touches. No. If no, the, the front, front can the front, touch. The front needs the front can touch. Yeah, but if you're the thing you want is the back tire square. Yes, but if your rear end is like way shorter rear, in than your front, then that's never gonna touch. No, if the rear end is way shorter in than the front, you get some equal length blocks. And oh, on both sides. Yeah. Okay, true. So what we're looking for now is hopefully this will touch this tire right here, and then it will touch both front tires. No, not yet. I still got like that much right there. Put some blocks on here, so we'll get some little, uh, little blocks. Um, I got you want like a paint mixing stick? Yeah, paint mixing stick. Okay, because you're using the mixing sticks to measure it. Yeah, you can do it just like that, or you can. But that's what I was saying is if your you front can end from that, that is one and five eighths. That's a little over one and five eighths. But what I'm saying is if your front end track width is wider than your yeah, rear end track width, that's, that's when you're going to have to space it out and you'll run into that issue. And you could technically spend a lot of time on the spacer if you wanted. That's pretty close. Now we got the front oh yeah, and then we're back with the crooked steering wheel again too. So what we'll do, Straighten the steering wheel back out. The steering wheel out. And yeah, and then it's touching on, no, it's not touching on either, See, but it's almost touching it's over almost there. It's almost touching there. Yeah, and, and it's, it's not right touching. There. Yeah. So what we got to bring is this front out until they're front both out. the same distance. Okay, so I'll watch that. I got to slide under here without bumping the block. It's probably gonna move the steering wheel a little bit too. Yeah, I'll try to hold the steering wheel also. And then y'all, this is more than likely than when you go to drive it, it's probably gonna, that looks kind of close right there, Mike. Right, what you got? That looks kind of close, let me see a tape measure. It might pull your steering wheel and you might have to keep messing with it to get it right. Man, I can't even measure that, it's so close. It's probably only um, for certain eight. Yeah, where's, oh, let me get that other paint mixing stick. I need a, uh, I need one of them old school rollers. Yeah. So the paint mixing stick barely touches on the back side, but the front side, it kind of drags. So technically the front could go in just a touch. I mean, just mm -hmm. ever so slightly. Yeah. All right. So the mixing stick still touches on the back, but you do have the raised letters. I mean, dude, I consider that freaking right, well, ridiculously close right there. All right. So what we're going to do now is now we know that front wheel right there with the steering wheel is square with the rear end. Yes. So we're going to measure from from rim to rim, front and back, and set this wheel off of this one. Off of this wheel. Yes. Okay. All right. So now, like Mike was saying, is now that you have established that this wheel is square with your back wheel, your steering wheel is somewhat straight. Okay, and when you start driving, again, it's probably going to either pull to the left or right a little bit, just naturally. So you're probably going to have to come back and keep messing with this if your steering wheel being off a little bit bothers you. But we're starting with this front wheel square off the rear, steering wheel square. Now we're going to use these plates. Um, you can get these off of Vever, I think it's the website. I did a uh, video on these and the company. And then you can also just get them off eBay. I think these actually originally come off eBay. So you'll put one over there like this and it comes with two tape measures. So you'll hook a tape measure there and there, it's got a little slot. Make sure that's up against the tire nice and tight. Make sure this side is 
up against the tire, nice and tight, and then you'll measure it. So this side we have, that's 67 and a half, like dead on the money right there in the center of your metal. And that's 67 and a half, dead on the money right in the center. So these wheels are perfectly apart. Um, when I originally did mine by myself, which Mike, which you could do also, is I actually took a ratchet strap and I went around right here around the tire to make sure that plate stayed sucked in um the first time i ever used these well, plates right there, man. Yeah. It's way better than the way i do it or you can take a clamp a squeeze clamp and go to the spoke and just suck it in right there and then they also come with these little uh pieces that you can put in here to make it stand off the tire if it needs to or yeah. or to go off the rim a lot of people want to touch the rim, the rim yeah. not the tire but we're just throwing it off there the tire it should right be freaking here, fun but yeah so that should be that should be square, dude. Right? What you think, Mike? Back end square by yeah. measurements. This tire square with the rear end. That tire square with this one. Yeah. Did we check? Did we check left to right on the rear when we were at Randy's? I don't think we did. Well, we can check that now. Yeah. I don't think we did. Because I think when I was measuring it for the rims, it was a little off. So let's check that measurement real fast. All right, so now it is uh, 16th shy of 67 and a quarter. And that is... Man, what, hold on, I've read something wrong because this is 67 and three quarters. No, yeah, that's 67 and an eight. It's turned in, it's turned in a quarter of an inch. Yeah, the front. Like yeah, so we need to put- So what we're, what we're doing now real fast, so I wasn't filming, is we're going up two inches at a time with the front of the car. We did clamp our plates to the wheels like I just talked about. And so every two inches that we go up, we're checking bumps here to see what's going on. So what we're going to end up doing, I think, to fix that, is the back of the back of the front end is getting wider and the front end is getting narrower so we need to shorten up this distance right here so it pushes the wheel out further okay so maybe we should just start by taking this big one out yeah take that washer out okay so let's do that so what we did was for people that wanted a little bit more detail is we changed this spacer was down here so we went with a little bit smaller spacer and i only put this one up here so i don't have to run that bolt down so far it's literally doing nothing else so a little bit spacer a little bit smaller space of here and now that we are all the way settled back down it's completely jacked our alignment up again because every time you change that it's gonna yeah it's gonna you're gonna have to redo your thing again that's why having these plates are a lifesaver because mike can literally just lay there while i measure these and it don't take two people holding it on the tire like normal so it definitely saves you time all right, All right. so now we are 60, uh, 67 and 5 eighths to the center of the plate. And this one is 67 and three bigger than three quarters to the center. Tell me if it's getting yes, it is getting smaller on the back side. All right, you're ready to check the steering wheel. All right, check, check the steering wheel. Check the steering wheel. Make sure steering wheel is straight and wiggle it a little bit. Yeah, it's still good. Yeah. Right. Let me check the measurements. Yep. 67 and a uh, 67 and a half to the inside of the plate. 67 and three quarters to the inside of the plate. When you go back the other way. Yeah. Two. All right. So that is going to be now 67 and three quarters to the center of the plate. 67 and we're almost three quarters to the inside of the plate. A little bit more. All right, so that's 67 and three quarters to the outside of the plate. This is 67, uh, three quarters to the inside of the plate. So we're like bouncing around a 16th. No, right there, hold on. 67, three quarters to the center of the plate. 67, three quarters to the center of the plate. Okay, so that's right. And it don't matter y'all if you measure on the back side of the plate, the front side of the plate, or the center of the plate. I change my measurements every time, depending on what is easiest to the nearest eighth. Just make sure you're measuring the same from the front to the back uh, when you're doing when you're checking your numbers. And then again, he's got the car all the way settled, so he's just gonna go up, or he'll tell me here to go up. So what we. 14. All right, so now 67 and three quarters almost to the outside of the plate. 
67 and three quarters to the center of the plate. No, hold on. No, it just moved 67 three quarters yeah, to the outside of the plate. So that's pretty much dead on within like a 30 seconds. Okay. And make sure your tape is tight and you don't have slack in it. 67 and a half to the inside of the plate. Yeah, 67 and five eighths to the center of the plate. Okay. We're we're thin like a sixteenth. It's a sixteenth off. Yeah. Uh, take the steering wheel and make sure that's straight too, because that would that'll change that measurement. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, still check that measurement again. I bet you it's changed. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven and three quarters to the outside. Sixty-seven. Still that sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, or eighth. Yeah, we're bouncing around maybe a sixteenth to an eighth and off. Eighth off of each wheel is a sixteenth, bro. Oh yeah, true. Okay, yeah, because you have to divide that. So it's a sixteenth on both sides. Is that eighteen right there? All right. So now it is sixty-seven and three quarters to the outside, and sixty-seven and eight still. Yeah, sixty-seven and five eighths to the outside. So yeah, it's a sixteenth off. I can off probably still. make it. I can make it just a touch bit longer down. Well, I don't know what. How are you going to run this thing to start with? Are like, you going to strap it down to start with? Yeah, we're going to radial let's race. It, let's keep it straight down bottom, and then if okay. you decide to loosen up, we need to add like uh, one flat to that. Okay. To, to counter. So when we're ready to go back at a track, long travel, yeah, we're, we're we'll dial this right in even more. But for right now, we're only going to be utilizing probably Eight. half of the front suspension, yeah. if I mean, that. We're only we're on, we're only losing a sixteenth throughout the whole travel. So. Yeah. Okay. I, I can live with that. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that's like freaking dead on. I mean that's that's really freaking good. Like, the sixteenth through that much travel is. Uh, I see what you're saying. So if you're measuring an eighth difference on this side, yeah. everything has to be divided by two. Because it's one sixteenth on each. Yeah. So sixteenth on that side, sixteenth on this side is what it's actually off, um, which is. Crazy. I mean, you see some cars going down a track with long travel, and you can physically on camera see the freaking wheel. <laughs> so, so I mean, to be within a sixteenth on each side is freaking amazing. I mean, we could keep on going back and forth, but we're at the point now we're going to have to start grinding shims. Well, no, we got smaller shims. We do got smaller shims. I don't want to do is I don't want to get much closer to the uh, to the um, spindle with that heim joint because the heim joint has to have some standoff for us. Yes. Once you get full se full separation, yeah, yeah, that right part will bind into that part. Yeah. But we so, could, I mean, I've got more spacers. We could split this spacer we could split again. that again and do it one more time and yeah. probably get that 16th out of it. But I don't, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think it's necessary for what we're starting with. I'd rather have that clearance right there. Yeah. Especially for where we're starting the car at. Yeah, and plus you're gonna go drive it and check the steering wheel on it. And then we're Everything probably gonna mess with it more. We're yep. probably gonna do it one more time anyway. Yeah. So. so that's a good first rough in alignment. Yeah. That's rough in enough that I mean you could go you could go drive this car and check oh, it. Oh absolutely. Alright, so that's basically everything in the front end now. I think all we need to do now, uh, which I'm you know not gonna film it, is we got to weld up our travel limiters. I have the chains on there dangling, they just gotta be welded right here. Uh, I got to pull the wheels back off, grind the paint, weld them up, and then paint it. I need to uh, snug down all the bolts real fast on the suspension, and then we'll put the grill back on, the bumper back on, the valence back on, the front end's done. Next video you see, we're going to be moving on to the rear end. We're changing the shock mounting location, so the shocks are up like this, let's say now. We're rolling them back, so I ordered new tabs. We're doing that, and we're doing the anti-roll bar links, double-checking the rear end, uh nuts and bolts and everything and then this car will be ready to go to tkm performance for the dyno so make sure you stay tuned smash the notification button so you can get notified every time i drop videos because i'm not dropping them daily anymore so you don't want to miss them and i'll catch you all in the next video thanks y'all